Now it's now it's recording. Okay, that's not how it works. <laughs> you just you're only supposed to do one clap, so you you sync the two. You don't walk like a monkey. And if one is good, three is better. <laughs> we we would look so stupid if I'm like this is episode seven and nope. <laughs> No, it's not, you dummy. <laughs> Guaranteed, someone would have been in the comments going, idiot, it's episode eight. Like, count, learn to count to eight, But you know idiot. who You know who that wouldn't have been? Who? My boy, Parker. From no, Texas. Austin Parker. Austin Parker from Texas. He's our boy. Yeah, he is. Austin, if you, uh, if you send Mitch a DM, we'll send you something cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah DM me, dude. Up. Actually, that's a good point. So, <clears throat> hey, Austin, if you're listening to this, DM me on Instagram, dude, at fit for moto. And uh, I will send you a free iRide pack of a bunch of stuff. That's awesome. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. I like that. Watch, I'm going to get flooded now by different Austins for free stuff. <laughs> How many Austin parkers <laughs> could there be in Texas? Totally, right? That, 914. Well, that, that, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, man. So, um, episode, so here's the thing, too. I never look at... I used to. I used to always look at um, at comments and stuff. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, I find YouTube is like this cesspool of negative comments, dude. Now, to be fair, most are positive. Most po most comments are positive, but I do find that like you'll get just terrible, terrible ones on YouTube. Whereas, like on Instagram, you'll never get those. Facebook's terrible as well. Mm -hmm. Instagram, you don't really get the hate. Whereas YouTube, dude, it's like. Bunch of trolls. Yeah, man. I don't know what it is about YouTube. So, um, for the most part, I stopped looking at comments because they like just ruin your day. Like, I made a fake account just to make fun of your arms. And that's you? That was me. <laughs> <laughs> Butt stuff 69, that's you. <laughs> Oh, hang on. Here we go. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <clears throat> I've been outed. Thanks. <laughs> I knew that was you. I figured it Breaking was. Breaking news. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> but stuff. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. I guess we better get this show on the road here. All right. Um, okay. What's up, everybody? I'm Mitch. This is the Fit for Moto Academy podcast. I'm joined by my co-host, Rick. Hey, everybody. What's going on, dude? Um, Not a whole lot. The highlight of my week was I got my beard trimmed. You got your beard trimmed. Boom. And what was their name? Uh, <laughs> my wife did it. <laughs> oh, she did? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So shorten it. Took a little bit off the bottom. Why so? I slick. I was just getting big. I think Long. she's trying to control you. Maybe. <laughs> Which made me think... Do normal people do that? Do they have their wives do it? Do they do it? Trim I it think themselves? so. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I mean, I get my wife to do my hair and stuff. Like, Gotcha. I mean, dude, I mean, I, I get some people want to go do like a barber shop and stuff like that. Like and that's timey one with straight razors yeah. and stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. manly. And I, and I get that. Like, maybe that's more of an, like, an experience, you know what I mean? But yep. I can't be bothered to spend the time, dude, to go sit in that chair. Like, I'd just be sitting there getting more and more pissed off because of how uh -huh. long it's taking me to get this done versus I just sit in the mirror in the, in the bathroom and just start cutting, you know? Oh, you use scissors. Yeah. Well, I'm old school. Oh, nice. Yeah. No. I also use a horse-drawn carriage to get around. <laughs> well, I've seen that. That's how you get to the track. <laughs> That's right. That actually would be pretty cool if some dude pulls up in a horse-drawn carriage with a bike in the carriage. Yes. That would be pretty cool. The The only um, <clears throat> close thing to that that I've ever seen was a guy that showed up. Um, okay, so picture this. So he's driving a road toad, like a street bike, like a Harley, say. Although I think it was a Yamaha or whatever. The, whatever the fuck. I don't know what it was. Don't care. Not a street bike guy. He shows up in the street bike and it's pulling a trailer that has his dirt bike on it. That is awesome. Yeah, like that's pretty cool. Way to go. I thought that was pretty awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I have yet to see the horse drawn carriage, but I want to see it. Yeah. I want to see it. So if someone's listening to this that has a horse drawn carriage, can you please show up to the track with that? And then hit a tabletop with your horse. <laughs> Start. Whip it. <laughs> just lay it right down. I, I think you probably, I think you would, but just not intentionally. Like you've had a big old wreck. Yeah. You know, there's got to be a good old country boy out there though. You know what I mean? A country boy. Country boy. Country boy out there. It's got a horse drawn carriage and wants to hit a little tabletop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't even know why we started this one. Episode eight. No. Don't say seven. Eight. 
do not say seven. Right. I don't want to get the hate. No. Don't hate on me, people. <laughs> I'm not smart, so don't hate on me. We forgot the abacus. You can't kick That's the why. dumb. Yeah, you can't kick the dumb kid. We all know that. But you can. You just shouldn't. <laughs> okay. Well, I just opened the comments. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're gonna get blasted. <clears throat> uh, so episode eight. Eight. Yep. Now, what is, what's this one called? Yeah, have you noticed? So we're eight episodes into this thing, and I never remember a single name of any one of them. I literally look to you and ask you what it is, and it's not because I'm trying to include you in the conversation. I straight up don't remember a single name of them. Yeah, and if I had half a brain, I'd write it down. Well, that's asking a little much. It is. You should, know, Should we Google it? We'll Google them. Google, would Google know what we called our podcast <laughs> before it's released? They're always listening. It is an oracle. <laughs> yeah. It might have been. Who knows? It, but to be fair, they are always listening. Like, you, uh, if I if I open the door, so we're where we're at right now. My my Mac is within like listening distance, and if I open the door that separates the rooms, and I say, "Hey Siri," that will go doo doo, and it will go ask me what I'm looking for. You can't tell me it's not listening. Oh, it knows, right? Yeah, crazy man. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't think that that's being used for some nefarious, some nefarious government technology. You know what I mean? No. But, um, but it is listening. And I, for one, actually enjoy that, to be honest, because I want answers fast. Like, I like being able to have answers immediately at my fingertips. Oh, that's awesome. You yep. know? I'm a fan of that. Me too. Yeah. So how's your week, dude? What's, what's new? Um, I'm broken, sort of. What do you mean? What happened? So well, hold on. I know you're broken, but it's mostly mentally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a given. <laughs> what? Uh, how? How did you break things? All right. So I was working out last week. Allegedly. Allegedly. As doesn't, doesn't from show my physique. Doesn't show. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I need to get one of those silicone body suits. Have you seen those? A what? Yeah, silicone body suit. So, okay, what, I have so many questions. Why were you Googling silicone body suits? How did it come across it? And now all you're going to see are ads for silicone body suits, by the way. Totally. I've seen so many. So I was looking up. How was it in an adult store? No. <laughs> it was Amazon. <laughs> so I was scrolling through reels, um, saw some dude that was jacked, that wasn't actually jacked, and he had a, a silicone body suit. So then I what? quickly Googled how to get jacked like Mitch from Fit for Photo. <laughs> um, couldn't find the results. Um, had something to do with having to work out and eat right. And Yuck. Yeah, yeah. So I just wanted next day delivery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, next day delivery, Absolutely. Amazon Prime. I would need to prime. Absolutely. I want to prime this body. Do you think we could put a link to a bodysuit? Wait, I can put it in the podcast cool. description, but Let's I don't. Do it. <laughs> it might get weird. Yeah, we're so, gonna get a whole new audience for sure. Um, yeah, but it's a shirt that has. Big pecs. You're kidding me. Dead serious. And it looks legit. No It looks way. so real. You're, so you can buy a silicone friggin' thing that you can wear now and wear a shirt over it where it makes it look like you're jacked, but you're really just an average looking dude. Yep. You're absolutely. kidding me. That dude, what is happening? Bruh, right there. You're kidding me. I know, right? What? I don't have to work out anymore. I can't believe this, man. Okay, first of all, it says Insta Stud. <laughs> Hyper realistic bodysuit makes wearer look swole. Swole, yes. <laughs> That's how you know some meatheads concocted this. Insta Stud makes you look swole. So swole. Not like, you know, look felt, look <clears throat> look healthier or attractive. It's like, look swole, bro. <laughs> you will impress all your bros, <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, exactly. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Um, now, to be fair, they probably have sold quite a number of those. Oh, yeah. yeah Question, though. I, I got though. three. Well, <laughs> you're probably their number one buyer. Absolutely. You're wearing one now. Um, <laughs> to be fair, though, what, like, okay, so let's say someone's got a big old belly on them. Big old hairy belly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm talking, like, like a big hairy belly. Like mine. Yes. Um, okay. How does one wear that then? So now you have these silicone abs on top of this hairy belly that just sticks out like a giant hairy belly, but it's not, it's abs. But all you see is the abs. 
So it doesn't matter that it sticks out. But it kind of does because it, like, doesn't that make you scratch your head? How do you have this giant turtle back <laughs> in your stomach? I don't know. <laughs> That's I, weird. I, I don't want to Google pictures of that. So. <laughs> Just leave it to your imagination. That's crazy, dude. I did not know that existed. Yeah. And that is the ultimate in fraud. Yep. Eh? Absolutely. Imagine that. Imagine being some girl where you're like, oh, that dude's jacked and he works out. And then he literally peels his skin off. <laughs> I'm starting to question you. Yes. Here, let's don't, do a pinch test. Don't take... Uh, stop it. The makeup's going to come off. Stop it. softer than I should be. <laughs> um, that's weird. That yeah. is weirdness. I've seen some weird things, and that's that's up there for sure. Figured. But you know what? Like, if you look at, I guess, some women, how they wear, like, what's it called? A corset or something? That thing that squeezes them? Oh, yeah. Corset, I think it is. Sure. Something like that, right? Where it squeezes them, gives them this more shapely figure, I guess, or whatever, right? Push-up bra, all the makeup. That's kind of fraud too. Yeah. You know? I mean, I'm okay with that fraud, but <laughs> <laughs> that uh, that 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 guy thing, that's just straight up weird, dude. Weird. Definitely weird. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Huh. I don't know how we got started on that, and I completely forgot what we were talking about, because now I'm just thinking about yeah, you can look <laughs> Peeling insta, <skin> insta <laughs> stud swole with this peeled skin suit. <laughs> of course, you call it a skin suit. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's what it is. It's a skin suit. So Dwight was ahead of his time when he put it on his face. Yeah. <laughs> 100%, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you're broken. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, Doing overhead press, so barbell press, and tweaked my back a little bit. It was uh, the left trap, and didn't listen to our advice to other people in a previous podcast. I'm like, hey, I'm just going to keep going. So I finished my workout, didn't feel great, um, took it, took Friday off from the gym, just did some cardio. Your week? My <laughs> week. Took six <laughs> weeks off. <laughs> Nine months in the making right here. <laughs> Um, and then uh, ended up at the track with you for the school on Saturday. And you're at a track. You can't not ride dirt bikes. Well, yeah, of course you're going to get some laps in. Yeah. So I woke up feeling terrible yesterday and today. <clears throat> so I did. Like I did. what you mean? You get a bum tum or? <laughs> no bum tum. <laughs> yeah, my back's just all tight. It hurts to uh, to move. So I can kind of move to the left. Can't shoulder check well. All right, you probably shouldn't drive. No. No. Yeah. It's not safe. Drive like my wife. Yeah. Not safe. Not safe. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, trying to get it fixed. Like, uh, had my wife work on it a little bit Sunday. I got 90, hour, 90 hours, I wish. 90, 90 hours. 90 minutes of massage today. And, That'd uh, be an intense session. There'd be nothing left. No, you'd be a goo. Yep. Just, just paste. <laughs> a thick paste-like <laughs> substance. It'd be expensive, too. Yep. Benefits wouldn't cover that. No, no. They cap out pretty quick. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, yeah, what the heck do I do? Um, well, before we get into that, let's, um, I will mention you should go to, um, Dr. Lori Fisher in Calgary. Okay. She is who works on me. Um, the Calgary soft tissue clinic, I think they're called. I'm sure if you Google, Google that, um, or her name, Dr. Lori Fisher, it'll come up. So she's who works on me. She's, she works on all high level athletes, like across the world. She's world renowned. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. She was, she's got, um, her PhD in biomechanics and, um, soft tissue, something or other. Um, dude, she's incredibly knowledgeable on injuries and getting athletes back up and running again. Mm-hmm. She works on like NFL players and whatever, whatever. Nice. Yeah, hockey players, all that kind of stuff. So she's seen it all, um, and she's she's really, really knowledgeable. Every time I come to her with like a tweak or something like that, mm-hmm. she'd be like, oh, it's this, and then she'll dig into it, and oh, she's um, uh, a registered massage therapist as well. Oh, cool. So not only does she know every single thing about the human anatomy, she's actually like, a, she's a world-renowned expert. So uh, she knows what she's talking about. Yep. Like I said, she's a massage therapist as well. So she knows what she's doing, how to manipulate the tissue, knowing what it is, and then manipulating it and getting you back on track. Gotcha. So definitely um, hit her up in Calgary. Um, just let her know that I sent you and, and um, well, it probably won't make a difference. But <laughs> uh, yeah, Mitch sent me. Who's that? Mitch Robinson. Who? 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 Uh, Fit for Moto. Who? He's kind of a big deal. 
Who? <laughs> Who? <laughs> what, what NFL team does he play on? It's the short, fat guy that you've worked on now and again. Oh, oh him. I, I thought yeah, his yeah, name yeah. was Joe. Yeah, the guy with the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but definitely check her out in Calgary, dude. So yeah. she's got two offices in Calgary. <clears throat> um, she's available throughout the week. Like, she's just a workhorse, man. She works nonstop. I um, don't think it's appropriate to call a lady a horse. Fair enough. But I meant it in an, uh, an ad- adoring. No, uh, I can't think of the word. Adoring. No, I meant it in a nice Admiration way. Admiration or something. Like yeah, that. yeah, something like that. I meant it in a in a nice way that <laughs> she's just she works nonstop. Gotcha. She's. I was gonna say a beast, but now you might be she's going a beast. I mean, <laughs> she's next level awesome at her job. So definitely check her out. So she will definitely get you sorted. Um, and it's interesting because every time I go. Uh, have work done and so because i've been doing so much running lately my soleus muscles and my calves have been giving me some issues not not issues they just get tight from all the running right and um uh you know she'll dig into them get to work hamstrings same thing from running um because i'm built like a hippo i don't run that efficiently so my body takes a just a beating when it when i what are you what are you giggling about so we went to the zoo uh two weeks ago (laughs) oh and you saw me you saw uh, me hippo. in the enclosure. Do you know how they poop? Yeah, like a fan. Don't they yeah, do like that, a fan that, thing? So I just picture you and your bathroom and your poor wife having to clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nature calls. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let me out of the enclosure. That's what's going to happen. Um, yeah. So anyway, so like, um, you know, with the running and stuff, the, mm-hmm. the, my calf muscles. So, but every time I go and talk to her and I'll go see her for like an hour. And dude, like the next day, you will feel like you've been hit by a bus from her. Like really? she's... It hurts like crazy, dude. Like I've seen grown men in excruciating pain with her. Um, but but that temporary pain turns into complete relief usually a day or two after. Well, that's so, awesome. Yeah. I've, I've been to a good massage, th- a few good mas- massage therapists. And man, by the time... Masseuses? Are they called masseuses? 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 <laughs> What's plural? <laughs> A couple country boys. Country boys. <laughs> uh, but yeah, by the time you're done, like it loosens up so much and you feel quite a bit better. And if you don't feel like a bomb went off in your body, I think they're doing it wrong. Yeah. See, and I don't know, dude. I Honestly, I've had nothing but, uh, aside from Lori, mm-hmm. um, where she's, man, she is so to the point yeah. um, with with injury and, and dealing with stuff. Like I've found when whenever I've gone to get a massage, you know, they put you in the room, they have it kind of dimly lit and they got the music on and whatever, whatever. And it's, you know, it's meant to be this relaxing thing, right? I want relaxing. I want, I want to be fixed. Dude, me too. Like I don't, this, I don't want to enjoy this, get to work and bust some shit up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I'm here to be broken down and, and, and Lori is, dude, she's vicious. Like she is, she has no mercy. She gets in there. The room's the room has just got the lights on and there's no music and it's just like get to work. Right. Um, but when I have gone to a massage therapist or Masisi's, <laughs> <Masisi's. laughs> when I have gone to them to get some stuff done, literally I just get, I get almost embarrassed or frustrated because they like start sighing and making all these, like they're pissed off at me and I don't know what to do. Like I'm like, I, you, first of all, you need to push harder because I can't feel what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. And second of all, they're just like, oh my God, like, you know, whatever the scar tissue or whatever it is, they just, they're just like, oh, you know, so I just stopped going to them because it's like, I don't know, I just feel bad. They're not bad, but I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I get that. Um, I went to a new lady because I was in a pinch and it was a same day appointment and I ended up with hot stones on my back. Like, uh, no, just just fix it, please. <laughs> Got some hot stones on there. Yeah. That'll be three hundred dollars. Totally. And she was tugging on my toes at one point. I'm like, Dude, I thought I didn't think you were gonna say toes. Gee, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to reach the sound effects, but I just can't. I need a stick. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but I I was just thinking, I'm like, okay, so with my high school education. The backbone's connected to the toe bone? <laughs> how, how, how does that work? I d- yeah, I don't know. Pulling on your toes will relieve your trap muscles, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I guess so. Everything's connected, but I don't know if it's that connected. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, dude, I, I, I can't say enough about, about Lori, and I'm not getting paid to say this. 
I get nothing for this other than my experience with her. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been to a lot of sports doctors, chiropractors, massage therapists, and not a single one has ever had the knowledge that she has. And she's like, like she works on cadavers and stuff too. Like she was, she teaches med students on cadavers oh, and no way. yeah. And so she invited me into the cadaver lab to, to kind of peel some skin back. I see dead people. Dude. And I want to do it. Like, I think it'd be so cool. Dead people? Well, yeah, they're dead. Okay. So you're good to just go get hands on. And yeah, dude. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think it'd be cool to like to actually see how something functions. Like not just um, not just a CGI thing off the internet. Like, yeah. show me what a knotted muscle looks like. Show me what the fascia looks like when it's all bunged up and and held to the tissue. So this is one of the first questions that I asked her. Mm-hmm. So as it relates to say your your trap or if somebody else out there is having some issues with something that they've injured. Yeah. Um. So the fascia, if you don't know. Do you know what the fascia is? No. Okay. <laughs> so the fascia is like, if you picture it, it's like this netting that goes around your muscle. Gotcha. Okay. And your muscle and the fascia slide to slide. Um, they're supposed to slide independently of each other. Mm-hmm. Sometimes what happens though is they get stuck on each other. And so you have to try and break them up so that it slides freely. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. So the, the muscle needs to be able to move freely underneath this netting. And this netting re- really is kind of what, so there's your skin mm-hmm. and then there's all, you know, your, your, um, your nervous system and the veins and all that stuff. And then there's the fascia that goes over top the tissue. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yep. It's, sorry, the muscle tissue. <clears throat> so, so with that fascia, it does get bunged up and it does, <laughs> it does, <laughs> it does get bunched up and it does get stuck and, and it'll actually mm-hmm. adhere to the muscle tissue and then and therefore your muscle can't work effectively in the range that it's meant to work in and it'll start causing issues. Gotcha. And is that a knot? No, m- a muscle knot is something totally, totally different. different. Yes. But, um, if your if your fascia is all, is all stuck to everything and it's mm-hmm. kind of, um, it's not working effectively like a netting, yep. it, it will start to cause issues. So Obviously. like I asked her, I'm like, I, I, I've seen, I've seen a, a, you know, a fake image of what fascia looks like, but I want to see on a person what does this look like as it's attached to the muscle? Like, does it, what color is it? Like, you know what I mean? Like I want to, I don't want to just make these images up in my head. I want to see so that when I am training or when I'm training other people, I know exactly what I'm talking about. You know what's going on in your body and yeah. their body. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, Makes sense. And, and I think it's fascinating stuff anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> So, you know, some of the things that she's done as it relates to dirt biking is like with my forearms, she'll start to work on that fascia and start to kind of mobilize some of that again gotcha. so that the the tissue within my forearms is free to move again <clears throat> after all the years of building up scar tissue from, from all the riding. Mm-hmm. Copy that. Cool. So uh, that's massage. What else can I do? Oh, did we decide on a podcast title? Mm. episode eight what to do when you're broken yeah ep8 what to do when you're broken we're 23 minutes into this thing you're welcome episode internet. eight help i'm broken <laughs> you're in, you're welcome internet <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple options there's two <laughs> dealer's choice <laughs> help i'm broken <laughs> um yeah so massage that that's one thing right now, I mean, it totally depends on the level of injury. If we're talking soft tissue injury, like you've pulled a muscle, something that, you know, for the purposes of this pod, we're not talking about broken bones or torn ACLs or something like that, right? We're talking, you've got a little tweak going, yeah, right? Um, so for sure, um, uh, massage is one of the things that you can do. Start with some fascia stuff, and then you can start to work on deeper tissue stuff, which is a lot of what Lori does. Gotcha. And um, that's when you'll start to to kind of get the fiber straight out. Now, this is another question I had for her. I'm like, okay, so I've heard of a muscle knot, right? Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I've seen little images of it on the internet, fake images. Yep. What the, what does that actually look like? Mm-hmm. What were you going to say? I'm uh, just biting my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> so when she pulls in her out of her pocket and it's like, this is a muscle knot. I don't get it. Uh, from the cadaver. You're oh, at the lab. Gotcha. Yeah. That, I would be impressed by that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, so I'm like, what does that actually look like, right? And so, um, <clears throat> it's the same thing that I heard before. 
But I guess if nothing else, it just reconfirms it to me. So a muscle knot is if you kind of get your fingers together and you kind of jumble them all up. Okay. Right? And kind of make almost like one big fist with your two hands. Does that make sense? Where your, where your fingers are all intermingled for the people not watching the video? Okay. So that's a muscle knot. Okay. Now, as you work that through like deep tissue... And, and that can be done, by the way, by somebody else or by yourself with like a lacrosse ball or a foam roller or something that applies a ton of pressure to that one area okay. to what's called a trigger point. If you, if you continue to work that area, it will literally just start to straighten everything out. So, so now for the people that are just listening, my fingers are, are still inter twingled, inter, inter, inter betwingled, <laughs> but everything's straightened out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so that's the way that the tissue is supposed to work so that the muscle fibers will, will work independently of each other, right? Gotcha. Um, whereas a muscle knot is, is like you've got this big fist thing going on. So as you work it, things will straighten out like that. And I said, or asked her, I'm like, is that, is that really what it looks like? And she said, that's exactly what it looks like on, on real muscle tissue. So wouldn't it be neat to see that though? Like I've always heard of, oh, I got a knot in my back or, oh, I got a knot in my whatever, my yeah. chest, whatever it is. Um, what does it even mean? Like, I'd like to actually see it. Yeah. That and then, you know and then what's I, going on there. Yeah. And then I actually want to work <coughs> on and I want to see it lengthen out. Like how much pressure, how much time did it take to do that? You know what I mean? Like, so that when I'm doing it to myself, I, I, I know when that muscle knot has been worked out. So on a dead person, can you actually do that? Like just go work on their I'm not sure how the tissue would respond because there's no more blood flow okay. right so I don't know if it would if it would lengthen out or I would think because it's dead tissue it wouldn't do anything mm -hmm. I would think it's just going to get like rigor mortis or something and get gotcha. stiff you know yep. um, but hey I'm no doctor maybe it would I don't know <laughs> be weird though <laughs> poking on, poking totally. on a muscle knot on this dead yeah. person yeah just the old massage yeah and scented oils and you got your candles <laughs> you got and music candles going. she's like what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, how do I get him out of here? <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing like a, like a, I have like a textbook, like I'm a student. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I know you're way too dumb to be here. Yeah. You can put all that away and the candles. And the candles. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. But, um, so to work in the fascia, right. Making sure that that's all straightened out, that netting around the tissue is good. And then, and then working on that one area. So. So take your trap, for example, you can probably, I know it's probably manifesting itself throughout the length of the tissue. Yeah. Oh, so it goes, depending on what I'm doing, um, kind of the top of my neck all the way down to about where my belt line would be. Right. So that to me almost sounds like something a little deeper than just the trap. Okay. So there are groups of muscle tissues that run the full length of your back and they're very, they're very deep inside. Gotcha. They're one of the very first layers. So if you don't know, um, you know, there's like the big muscle group. So you got your traps, um, your lats on your back, like these big muscles that people are pretty familiar with. Yeah. And then under those is tons and tons and tons of other muscle groups. Gotcha. So there's something called a spindle or, uh, uh, starts with an S, um, spinalis. Siri. <laughs> yeah, so I know you're listening. So there, um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna Google it right now because I want to get it right. But there are some some um, really deep uh, back muscles that that um, lay like just off your spine in your back. Okay. And we often think of the you know kind of these bigger these bigger muscle groups, but there are lots of of um, of deeper ones here. So I just got it brought up. So, um. Let me think here. Yeah, see, even this one, this picture that I brought up has most of the, the major ones on it, yeah. but it's it's still not going as deep as I need it to go. And that's one of the things that I found so interesting is is um, there's a lot of ones that they don't really talk about um, that are so deep in there. Oh, so here it is. So sp spin spinosis process of the T12 vertebra. Bra. 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 Um, yeah, yeah, so there, anyway, my, I kind of get sidetracked here, but my point is, is that there's lots of really deep, um, things in there that can be affected that, that will manifest themselves as something else. Like you may think, okay, it's my track that's tweaked. 
but it's probably something completely different. So I guarantee if you go to Lori, you describe what it is to her and she can make, oh, that's this. And she's going to dig into one spot and you're like, that's it. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. um, so definitely, obviously narrowing down what it is that needs the rest too, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, some other stuff that I've been doing, you mentioned it, the foam roller. I'm a fan of that because it's something I can do to myself. It's fairly easy to do. So, so do you... And, and I, I like the foam roller as well. Um, what do you think, what, what effect do you think that that has on your body? Like, what do you think it's doing? I have no idea. I just know it hurts, but it hurts so good. <laughs> so does it hurt everywhere or just in one spot? Uh, on the spot. Yeah. So that's exactly what you're doing is you're hitting a trigger point, mm-hmm. right? So okay. um, foam rolling is called myofascial release or self myofascial release. Mm-hmm. Is, um, it's a really effective way of getting the tissue to lengthen out a little bit, especially if you hit that trigger point, yep. you want to stay on that trigger point and, and really put a ton of pressure on that. And eventually it'll kind of release and let go a little bit. So the, I'm going to roll this 10 times full length. Isn't prob- probably not doing what I need it to. It's the, the trigger point. that Yeah. I need to hit. Yeah. It'll, that'll still help, but it's not going to be as effective if you sit on that trigger point and work that one little area out. So if there's people listening, you know, and they have a lacrosse ball or tennis ball might be better. Yeah, absolutely. And depending on your, your pain tolerance and the level of injury, you know, obviously a bigger ball spread over a bigger area, it'll be a little more gentle on that spot. Right. Um, now I have this, this little green ball that I actually found when I was on a dog walk. I don't even know what it's for, Mm -hmm. but it's, it's a little bigger than a golf ball. And, uh, it's rubber, but it's almost as hard as a golf ball. Nice. And so I've, I've actually kind of gotten rid of the lacrosse balls cause I find they're too big and I can't get deep enough with them. So what's interesting is most people get on a lacrosse ball and they're like, Oh, that's deep, right? Yeah. That hurts. yeah, yeah. Whereas I find it's not, it just can't get deep enough. So I'll put my, this little green ball and I'll put all of my weight into it. And even then I just, it's not quite enough for me. Mm-hmm. Hence why I need someone like Lori to get her elbows into me with all the weight that she has and, and really work that little area. So, gotcha. um, <laughs> um, nine times. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so a cross balls are good or a tennis ball is, will be a little more gentle than a cross ball, but yeah, you're doing self myofascial release. Okay. That's going to help loosen up that, um, uh, fascia that I, t- that I talked about. Mm-hmm. And if you do hit a trigger point, it's going to help try and release some of that too. And it may, it may take a few times. It, it's not going to work. You know, you can't spend five minutes on it and call it good. Maybe you can, mm-hmm. but most often it's going to take a little bit more than that. Gotcha. So if I'm having a trouble area, for example, one of my rhomboids in my back, I have a lot of trouble in one area. And if I don't keep attacking it multiple times a week, it will start to get really tight on me and it will turn into like a massive trigger point and mm-hmm. it's quite painful. And, um, so that's when I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I was being a little lazy about it and I'll get back on it with, with lacrosse ball or that, like I said, that little one I have. It makes sense to uh, stay on top of it and just put the time in now rather than having it grow into a big problem. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So those are a couple of things you can definitely do to help it out. Um, like I said, if it is something deeper, then you're either going to need someone's help who can dig through multiple layers of tissue. So that's something else, you know, like I said, like I keep talking about her, but she just... It's, um, most people you go to will not do this. Gotcha. So she will work through multiple layers of tissue to get to where she needs. So when she's working on my calves, she will literally push aside. So the, the big calf muscles that everyone's used to, right? Your big, yep. your calf muscles, your giant calf muscles. Yep. <laughs> she will literally push those aside and dig underneath those to get oh. to where she needs to get to. And, and you can feel it happening. It's not, it's not. It doesn't feel good, yeah. you know, but it's not, it's not over the top painful. Um, but you know, so she would do the same thing on your back. She will dig through multiple layers to figure out what it is that needs that help, you know? Oh, nice. Um, and so for me, I was having some lower back issues from, I was doing a lot of squat type stuff, like overhead squats. Um, mm-hmm. a lot of very, um, dynamic hip movements, I guess you'd say. Yep. And I felt it was my lower back. Okay. So that's what it was manifesting. When I went and seen Lori, she's like, no, it's not. It's actually one of your gluteus muscles. And it just so happens that that's where the pain is manifesting. So she drilled into this one muscle. It's right at the top. It's called your iliac crest. Okay. Right at the top of that, she started just getting her elbows into it, dude. And like, it hurt like a son of a gun. 
but over the course of like, I went to see her a couple of times, gone, pain's gone. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so it is, it is really important to know in not just where it's manifesting itself, but what the actual area is. Yeah. That's where, uh, seeing a professional would come in handy. Cause yeah, if that was me, I'd be, I'd be stretching, I'd be foam rolling my back and I'm hitting the wrong spot. Totally. And maybe it's just from doing all that helps and it'll help relax those areas, which may take some load off the area that's injured, right? Mm-hmm. Cause those areas can now move more effectively, move more efficiently, which, which may help, um, I guess some of the symptoms, but that's not to say that you've actually hit the right area and maybe you did, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe it is just your trap muscle. Um, but what I found is what, it, what I generally think it is, is not it. It's really interesting how the human body works where you think you've injured this one thing. And then, you, you know, so the shoulder is a really good example. People were like, well, I have a, my rotator cuff hurts. Mm-hmm. Well, your rotator cuff is made up of a bunch of very different muscle groups and different tendons and ligaments. Like it's a busy, high traffic area. Gotcha. So saying your rotator cuff hurts, well, it can be a ton of different <clears throat> things within that. And how you treat those things varies right so um knowing specifically what it is that's bothering you about your rotator cuff matters too you know just as an example yeah yeah that all makes sense okay um yeah. so one of the other things that i've been doing to uh hopefully fix my problem stretching thoughts yeah Oh, for sure. So, um, stretching is a massive, massive part to any program, whether that be preventative or, um, <clears throat> in when you're dealing with some sort of issue, right? Okay. So just like we talked about where it, it lengthens the muscle bellies and, and kind of draws things out, mm-hmm. you, you know, if you're doing stretching preventatively, that will have that effect. It'll make sure that things don't get bunched up like that quite so easily. Yep. It also lengthens out the fascia, all that kind of stuff, right? So huge benefits to that. Um, and I mean, I could go on and on about the benefits of stretching, but mm-hmm. um, now if, as it relates to dealing with an issue, yeah, absolutely. So our muscle bellies, like the muscle tissue that likes to, to get really pissed off and angry, right? It seems like it. Yeah. And so by stretching an area out, so, um, and when I say stretching an area out, there's a couple different things I mean here. Most people are normal. When they think about stretching, they think about, okay, I'm going to, um, bend over, touch your toes or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So let's say, yeah, let's say you bend over, <coughs> touch your toes and then, and you're stretching your hamstrings, right? Mm-hmm. You have to keep in mind that your body, your central nervous system will see things one of two ways. Either A, it sees something as a threat and it moves to protect, right? Mm-hmm. Or it'll recognize that something is not a threat and it will relax, okay? okay? Now, without getting too nerdy about it, when the body starts to relax and it recognizes that something is not a threat, it activates something called a GTO, and <laughs> you're probably not going to believe it, but it is called a googly tendon organ. No. Yes. Googly. Google eye or googly, I can't remember how you pronounce it, but GTO, the GTO organ. So it's roughly said after about seven seconds, your body will recognize that something's not a threat. So let's say you're stretching and you stretch violently suddenly, okay? Your body's going to sense that as that's a problem, I might tear tissue. Then if I tear that, that lessens my chances of survival. So it's going to stiffen up that tissue in an instant, Mm-hmm. Right to make sure that you can't go any further, that ten, that that tissue is going to harden really really fast, and then it'll try and protect itself. That, that totally makes sense. I've seen that lot. So uh, going back to touching my toes, I'll bend over, try and touch my toes, and I, it's a struggle to get my fingers there. But if I give it a good 20, 30 seconds, I get to the point where I've got my palms on the floor. Yeah, because exactly. my body's relaxed. Yep, exactly. Because your body's activating that GTO, and it's it's it said after about seven <coughs> seconds, seven to ten seconds, is when your body will start to let go mm-hmm. and allow you get to get into a deeper stress. Now, what's interesting is there are um, a lot of opinions, and i i do I do understand where they're coming from um, that suggest that. You know, they say, okay, you need to hold a stretch for 30 seconds mm-hmm. to, to see any benefit. And they say it should be one to two minutes. Okay. Um, from talking to Lori, she goes, nope, you should be even lower stress than that and hold it for five minutes. Oh, really? Yeah. So she's huge on that. She says lower stress, longer duration will give you a more effective mm-hmm. for preventative and for dealing with issues than it will be under a higher stress for shorter duration. I don't think I've ever stretched for five minutes. One, one, one muscle. One, yeah. Yeah. Never. Me neither. Me neither. And so when I was having the issues with my, what I thought was my lower back, I started working on the muscle that is near the iliac crest there and, and stretching that out. 
And I started doing it for three to four minutes per side at a time. And again, it was gone. Wow. So there is some truth to that, I think. It seems to work for me. So if you are doing some stretching, don't think like 30 seconds, I'm going to hold it just at the pain level that I can tolerate. Mm-hmm. You can get into a stretch where you can feel it stretching, right? Yeah. yeah. But, but hold it for a duration that you can do. Gotcha. The other thing you can do with stretching too is <clears throat> multiple times a day for shorter durations if you can. So let's say for forearms, right? You can stretch them while you're at a stoplight on your steering wheel, you know, uh, and do that multiple times as you drive sort of thing. Um, It's not going to be quite as good as holding it for, you know, five minutes, but at least it's something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So stretching definitely is another thing too. Um, You know, and then with, you know, aside from getting professional help Mm -hmm. from, you know, a sports doctor or something like that, you know, you you talked about, um, you know, foam rolling and stretching and, and these different things. Aside from rest, those are probably about the only things that you're going to be able to do right now, as you get into some professional help, well, that's a different can of worms for sure. Mm -hmm. But, um, I think, you know, if anyone out there is dealing with tweaks, whether it be in the shoulder or something like that, those are definitely some, some good things to, to try. And if none of those things seem to be working, well then maybe take it the next step, get an ultrasound, say if it's your shoulder, Mm you know, get an ultrasound on it. Maybe you've got a swollen bursa. Um, maybe you do have something that's partially torn and you may need to rest it. It could be a, a ton of different things, yep. right? Um, same thing with your back or your hips or something like that. Mm-hmm. I would say try all those things first. And if none of those things are, are helping with your little tweak, then then move to something a little bigger. Gotcha. One other thing I've noticed that helps, um, just moving. So it starts off super tight, super sore, and I, I stretch a little bit, I take a warm shower, I move a little bit, and the more I move, the better it ends up feeling. Yeah, totally. And so what's interesting <clears throat> about that too is um, the new the new way of dealing with, say, back issues, right? Because remember, it used to be, okay, r- rice, rest, ice, compression, elevation. Totally. Right? Go grab your Robaxa set, lie down, yep. don't, don't move. Don't move, right? Yep. And now with back injuries, it's, it's don't stop moving. Yeah, Stay yep. mobile, right? Um, and I'm the same way there, there. If I have a little tweak going when I wake up in the morning, um, it's, it's more noticeable for sure mm-hmm. versus, yeah, when I have a hot shower or when I do some exercising of some kind and my, my tissue gets limbered up a little bit, then I do find that it's a lot easier to, to kind of, you know, move it around. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's another good point too, but you also don't want to let it lull you into a full sense of security that something's fixed for sure. Right. Yeah. Um, I've always been a huge believer in listening to your body and using it as a guide. You know, if it's, if it's telling you stop doing this, definitely stop doing it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, cause there's been lots of times where I'll be doing a workout. I'll, I'll tweak something and then I'll be like, Oh, I'm going to finish the workout. Right. Yeah. And bad idea, bad idea. It got much worse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the next day it can hardly move. Um, whereas if I'd have stopped then and there, it probably would have been 50% less. Yeah. You know? Um, so, so I'm a huge believer in, in listening to your body too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, if you're broken, I think though, you know, I, again, aside from major <laughs> issues or something like that, we all, we all deal with these little tweaks, right? So it's kind of nice to, to have a couple ideas on how to do things, grab a foam roller or a lacrosse ball, or you can even use your wife's, um, if she like does baking, mm-hmm. um, like a rolling pin. Use a rolling pin and run over whatever issue, like if it's your calves, your quads, your hamstring, your shoulder. Oh, that's a great idea. You know, a rolling pin is a really good idea, or sorry, a really good way mm-hmm. to um, to self, self-soothe self or self-fix your, fix yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, or unless you have a a wife that loves to do uh, <laughs> masseuses stuff. <laughs> masseuses. Masseuses. <laughs> Masseusery. You know, um, then that's fantastic too. But if if... You're like me and you're, you have to do it by yourself because she gets annoyed in 30 seconds. <laughs> then, um, you know, then doing, doing something like that, it will work too. I mean, there's lots of, there's lots of ways to do it. You can just get creative, right? So for my back, I will put the lacrosse ball on a wall and I will lean into it as hard as I can and roll it across whatever issue I'm having, whatever that, wherever that trigger point is. Yeah. I've, I've found, uh, I'll just be leaning up against a door frame right on the corner, trying to get that spot between my spine and my shoulder blade, trying to get deep down there to try and fix it. And yeah, that's, that's what I came up with. Yeah. So that's, that's a really good idea too. Um, one thing that we didn't touch on is a massage gun. 
Oh, I've got one of those. Yeah. So I love massage guns, dude. If if you're listening to this and you've, you know, you've probably seen them, they're, they're somewhat common now mm-hmm. and um, you've never really been sure if it's worth it. It's worth it. Yeah, absolutely. They are worth every penny. Um, depending on where you're at, I, I got mine from Costco. I think it was 120 bucks, six and, beads. And I've seen them cheaper than that now too. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're becoming such a common thing that you can probably get them for pretty cheap now, yeah. but definitely pick one up. They're worth every penny. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, it's, it relaxes tissue so quickly. Like I literally will send chills through my body because everything just gets flushed and relaxes. Yeah. You know, um, I, honestly, a lot of times when I wake up, I have a stiff neck. I don't know if that's just the mattress I have or from all the exercising throughout the day or whatever it is, but I've always had some neck issues. Mm-hmm. And honestly, one of the first things I do is I grab that massage gun and I'll just do my traps around my neck and stuff like that yeah. and, and get everything to loosen up. Same thing with, uh, before I go for a run, I'll do my calves and my hamstrings and I'm, I'm moving way more efficiently as I run. That right. There's a pro tip. I need to start doing that hadn't thought about doing that yeah totally it works huge dude yep nice yeah so almost every day i'll do it um and if it just feels amazing it does right yeah like it really it does really you, good dude you can put that massage going on anything whether it's your chest your shoulders your neck your back your legs whatever and it just feels amazing that's awesome yeah yeah i love it so even i mean you could be sitting watching tv and just run that thing over the, the area that you're having an issue right if it's your back maybe get your wife or your husband or whatever to to hold it while you kind of run it over your back area yeah. or you know duct or shut to all i was gonna say or shove it in between the cushions and yeah. <laughs> sit, or- sit back into it <laughs> um but yeah man um uh, massage guns those are those are huge as well yeah okay. well i'm going to work out as soon as we're done here i will, allegedly allegedly <laughs> i'll give that a shot <laughs> i will stay away from anything that'll aggravate are you, are you gonna do some running yep you are you going for a run today yep oh you didn't want to run with me earlier uh, I was at the store. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> um, that's fine because I was running like a hippo and so huffing and puffing and wheezing and hacking my brains out so for being I sick. may have been able to keep up. Is no, you, you would have just left me in the dust. Doubt it. I probably would have tried to grab onto you like a backpack. <laughs> <laughs> just wear you as a backpack. I'm yeah, good with that. Exactly. Yep. Well, it was better than that weird skin suit. <laughs> oh, yeah. <that> <laughs> oh, I'd almost forgot about that. Dude. And you th- just had to bring it back. That is the weirdest thing I know, ever. Right? I, I shouldn't be surprised. I should not be surprised that human beings have come up with a skin suit to make you look fitter. Yeah. I do want to see it on a really fat person, though, because I think it would be funny. <laughs> yeah yeah so that's it man that is podcast episode number eight number eight so you're broken i'm broke i'm bro- um so you're so you're unbroken help me i'm broken <laughs> yeah man um thanks everyone for for tuning in and uh and listening to the podcast man where 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 can they find you we always talk about where we can find me where can they find you dude nobody <laughs> wants to find me yes they do um at Ninja Dust on Instagram. Ninja Dust. Okay, Ninja we never Dust. did get into where that name came from. Maybe at the next episode. Yeah? Yeah. Why, do you get a poop or something? No. <laughs> like, give people a reason to come back. Yeah, I suppose, <laughs> eh? <laughs> They're dropping like flies. Yeah. So. There's just our one boy from, from Texas that's yeah. still hanging on. <laughs> Parker. Yep. Um, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, where where me, people can find me you? Me and I don't like it. Yeah. Stop, make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. Reach out to me on Instagram at Fit for Moto F I T the number four M O T O on Instagram, Facebook, um, and on the website, man, fitformoto.com. But it's all spelled out, so F I T F O U R M O T O dot com. Get on the website. We have the Patreon on there. You can support us on the Patreon. We have lots of um, extra footage, things like that, that you can be a part of. And we'll give you shout outs on things like this, like the podcast. And, yes. And uh, yeah, man, it's a good time. And first person to follow me and send me a message, I'll send you a water Ooh, bottle like this. There you go. There we go. If oh. you DM Rick Nardo, which by the way is your Ninja Turtle name, I've decided yes. that, Rick Nardo. If you DM Rick Nardo Ninja Dust on Instagram, we'll hook you up. 
Yeah, I want somebody to slide into my DMs. It doesn't happen. <laughs> Male, female, whatever. Yeah, slide yeah. on in. Not picky. <laughs> slide on into my DMs. I'll be waiting. <laughs> <laughs> it puts the lotion on its skin. He also gets the hose again. <laughs> yes. Yeah, man. Well, thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in. This has been episode number eight. Eight. Have a great week, everybody. Yeah, thanks, everyone. We'll see you in the next one. I really need to put some better sound effects on this. Oh, yeah. You know what we need to put on here? I'm an island boy. (laughs) Just trying to make it. Yes. Although I'd probably get hit for some, like, copyright claim. Right? They'd pull it. For sure they would. Because those little... Island boys. Island boys. I was going to say something not so nice, but those little guys would want their cash. Oh, do you think we could have them on the podcast? We we might be able to, but it's just going to cost a lot of money. I... Oh... What are those shout outs or the, the videos they do? It's like 250 bucks and they'll do a personalized video. Holy. I will pay that money to have them <laughs> on the podcast. Do a, I'm a rider by. <laughs> I ride by. I'm an I ride by. <laughs> I say we do it. Totally. I'm in. All right. I mean, I'm in spending your money. For sure. Yeah, of course. Who <laughs> yeah. else would you spend? Yeah. I don't, you know, I don't really want to spend my own money, but mm-hmm. like on the island, boys. Yeah. That doesn't sound very good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I don't know why we're still rambling on. I don't know. Let's just flow into number eight, or sorry, number nine. Nine? Eh? Let's, let's do nine. Let's keep it rocking. We're almost, we're 50 minutes into this thing. Episode nine. Island, boys. <laughs> Coming your way. Yeah, we're gonna get some 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 face tats. Yes. Oh boy. Oh, did you see they cut their hair? They don't have the big seriously foofoos. Yeah, like almost down to the wood. It's short. Oh well, that was kind of a trademark thing for them, was it not? No. Yep. Mm. No, they're just lame. They're like the rest of us. Like the rest of us. Just good yes. old country boys. <laughs> just trying to make it. <laughs> Doing country things. Dude, country things. Country things. Yeah. You're hey gonna, man, you're gonna post that video, right? Yeah, I, heck I yeah, yeah, too. yep, yep. Good. Maybe even tomorrow. Ah, then people might get the reference. <laughs> yes, yeah, should do that for the one or two followers that might see it. <laughs> Texas will see it because he's, <laughs> oh, he's a champ. Yes. Yeah. Shout out Texas. Okay, buddy. Um, I guess we gotta stop this at some point. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have anything else to talk about, but... Chinese food. I yep. like it. It is good. Favorite thing? Ginger beef. <clears throat> no question. Yeah, that's pretty easy. Yeah. That's not even a competition. Um, the Viet subs at the Chinese food place are awesome. They're pretty good. Yeah, yeah I had one the other day. Oh, did you? Well, well I, mean, I had some... Uh, well, I had to get some of that pho. Pho. For uh, when I was feeling crappy there. Mm-hmm. Some of that, like, spicy stuff. Yeah. Got the nostrils running. Nice. Didn't I offer chicken noodle? You said no. I don't, I don't want what you have. <laughs> I don't want what you have. Not the first time I've heard that one. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. No, it was good, though. Good. Yeah. Now I'm kind of craving it, to be honest with you. I wouldn't mind a bow of fa. Oh, that'd be awesome. Fe. Fa. Fe. Is it fe or fa? It's fa, right? I think it's pho. It's not pho. Huh? No, yeah, oh. dude. If you talk to them, you're like, I'll get some pho in there. Sometimes they're like, it's not pho. <coughs> it's pho. <laughs> my bad. Oops. <laughs> my my bad that you're in Redneckville and I mispronounced your soup. This country boy can't uh, <laughs> order your soup. <laughs> totally, dude. I'll have a bowl of soup, please. Uh, what's that? Soup. I, w- I would like some soup. I said, I would like the soup. It's got the spice of peanuts in it, and uh, and then and then you put the sauce in it, and it's got a little bit of the noodles. I like, I'd like some of that. And for sure, for sure, this guy's chewing on a piece of hay at the same time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, these are my people, by the way. <laughs> I get them. Yes, we are one and the same. <laughs> for sure, they're calling it faux because that's how it's spelled. Yeah. Yep. You know, it's like it's like Kawia Creek. Um, the track down in the States, uh-huh. first, one of the vlogs I did, I went down to California and did a, whatever, a little vlog about the, the track there. Yep. And dude, it's, it's, it's literally spelled C-A-H-I-L-L-A. Mm-hmm. How would you pronounce that? 
look it up. C-A-H-I-L-L-A. Kalia? Ka. Kahila, right? Kahila? Or C C A H I U L L A. Kalua? Right, right. Kawil Creek or whatever, yeah. right? K- Kahula Creek is, I think, how I pronounced it. Mm-hmm. Dude, I got hate. How, how are you? I got hate on it? YouTube. It's pronounced Kawia. <laughs> okay, first of all, if you want it pronounced Kawia, don't spell it like spell Kahila. It Kawia. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like, dude, they're like a, a Kawia. Now, to be fair, it's of the indigenous population. Okay. So. Sounds different than it's spelled. Not my problem, okay? Mm. I, I don't know how you want to spell that, but, you know, maybe make it easier, I guess. Yeah, I don't come know. on, guys. Don't hunt on the hate on this country boy. <laughs> Just country trying boy. to make it. Yeah, man. It was, um, I got hate for that oh. from a bunch of people. Oh. Yeah. Hence the not wanting to check YouTube comments anymore. Gotcha. Just because I, I said something wrong. I got that on lockdown. What's that? Checking YouTube. I responded to people. Yeah, see, yeah. you're on it. But they're nice. They like us. See, they, and like I said, most of them are good. But dude, when I see some of the bad ones, I'm just like, why am I doing this? Like, it, they, it, and it shouldn't, but it really does just ruin my day to see one complete asshole that just, this is bullshit. Like, what a yeah. stupid effing song you picked. You're such a loser. Like, what? What <laughs> happened to you that you're so hurtful? Oh, I know. That's so sad. You know? His mom doesn't love him 100 percent. there's no way mom can love a guy like that oh. you know sad song ended oh <laughs> um no if you want to do comments that's cool okay yeah and and until like, somebody says yeah something dude new. you'll get right fired up like <laughs> hey you're fat oh and i bet you for every <clears throat> honestly dude for every i don't know 50 or more mm-hmm. there's maybe one bad one gotcha um, but I don't know why YouTube is just this hub of negative trolls, dude. Can we call it a cesspool? Yes, that's accurate. A cesspool of troll filth. Yes. Okay. That's likely. Gotcha. Yeah. It's terrible, dude. So if you can look after those, that would be great. Yeah. Because I don't want, I don't want people to think that I don't care because I do, but I also like my mental health and... I don't want to just be shit on by everyone. You don't want your feelings hurt. I get it. (laughs) (laughs) You've got like one or two left. How does save them? Wow. That was one of the most demasculating. Is that a word? (laughs) Emasculating? Demasculating? People know what I'm trying to say. That is one of the most demasculating. (laughs) That's not a word. There's no way that's a word. (laughs) Can you copyright that word? 100%. That's trademark. TM. Demasculated. TM. TM, everyone. You're welcome. Coming up with new words. Webster's come at me, bro. Yep. Oh, oh, wait. They're calling right now. Oh, that's them. (laughs) That's probably just the pizza guy going, you want your pizza, sir? No. Siri was listening. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. We've got pizza, pho, and uh, Viet subs coming. Yeah. They're so good, dude. Thanks, Siri. I read this. I saw this thing on Instagram. It was like... um, I worked out, can I have, or no, sorry, I ate whatever, whatever, I need to go exercise. And then the person was like, no, exercise isn't punishment for food you ate. It kind of is though. Cause like if I eat, if I eat, you know, an ice cream sandwich, I'm like, shit, I need to get the lead out on the next workout to make up for what I ate. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Um, but at the same time, I, I try and have like a healthy balance. You know what I mean? It's easier to live that way. Yeah, yeah totally. Like... Last night I had um, like an ice cream drumstick thing, mm-hmm. you know. How dare you, dude? It was amazing. Not gonna lie, right. it was. It, <laughs> who do you think you are? It was amazing. But <clears throat> then when I did my workout today, I ran a couple extra kilometers just so that I kind of burnt the energy off, right? Yeah. yeah. So for me, it's it's a lot of it is just about balance. You Makes know? sense. F- food's a fuel. There's lots of fuel in one of those drumsticks. So yeah, yeah, work yeah. a little harder. Yeah, totally. Was, was it the caramel one? Uh, Oreo. Oh, Oreo. Those are yeah. good. It was really good. Yeah. I didn't bother looking at the calories on it because I was scared to. Because I'm a wuss that way. Mm-hmm. I'd rather have my head in the sand about it. Genius. But, um. Because then you know you should have done six extra yeah, kilometers. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But now I want some takeout. Mm. Yeah. Well, the ladies are at our my house. Is, is Tash still sick? Yeah. But not that sick. Not contagious sick. No? No. Um, How do we confirm that? 
doctor and nurse. Mm. Yeah, she saw a doctor. What do they know? I don't know. What do they know? I don't know. They're jabbing us with needles full of <clears throat> vaccines. Yeah, they know something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe we should go surprise them with, uh, with some food. Man, what time is it? Oh, time. six o'clock? Holy dude. Yeah. It's, that's why I'm so hungry. It's not just because I'm fat. It's because it's dinner time. <laughs> <laughs> and look at the time. Episode nine. What's for dinner? <laughs> yeah, totally just roll right into it. Hey? <laughs> just a nine minute episode of we're us just, talking about pho. We're just going to skip the dishes. Uh, some food here. We, To be fair, we don't live anywhere where they do skip because no. we live too far out of metropolitan areas. Yes. Just country boys. Just country boys. We're just some good old country boys trying to do some country things, trying to get ourselves some food. Maybe we'll go get ourselves a chicken on the back. Yard. We go get pluck ourselves a chicken. We'll pluck her up. We'll put that son of bitch in the oven. <laughs> well, at least you know, we'll get the ladies put that son of bitch in the oven. <laughs> we'll be out doing man shit, man things. We'll be working the fields. We'll be picking bales. They got me fences to mend. We got some fences. We got to put up fences. That son of bitch, that that darn old cow went across the road over to Jim Bob's place. Jim Bob? It's got dude. It's Jim got, Bob got our cow. Jim Bob got the cow. And here's the thing: it's got my brand on it. How you now? How you gonna tell me that that ain't my cow? It's got my brand. Jim on. Bob, that's his cow. Jim Bob, that's my cow. I want my cow back. Let's go get a cow. <laughs> We're going off the deep end. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh, okay. It is six o'clock. I'm getting hungry. Yeah. Let's get some food. Okay. If if anyone's still listening to this, I'm really impressed because the last twenty minutes have been nothing but nonsense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. I gotta say, hats off to you. Thumbs up. We should, you know what? Let's do this. If you're still listening to this right now, um, as the song ends again, okay. if you're still listening to this right now, real quick, DM me on Instagram, Fit for Moto. I'm going to give you a discount code. Uh, sorry, no. Uh, I'm going to send you some free iRide stuff. Do DM they, me on Instagram, Fit do, for Moto. Do they need a safe word or, or code word? Safe word? I don't know. It's not sexual. It's <laughs> products. <laughs> um, DM me. DM me... Um, grinder, because you have a grinder right there. Well, I like that, but I was going to say something about, like, late watcher. <laughs> DM me, DM me, I'm a... I'm, I'm a, a, I'm a I'm, watcher. I'm a watcher. <laughs> DM me, I'm a watcher, and you're going to get some free stuff. Yes. All right. All right, everyone. 